Uh, yeah, we'll take that one. All right, chop it down yourself. Okay. If you're like me and have a definitely above average size Christmas tree flopping around after the holidays, in this video I'm going to brew with mine. Throw, put it and stick it in some beer. So uh, stay tuned, watch, watch what we're gonna do. And uh, while, while I'm getting grains, we'll pop up the recipe in front of my face. Let's go. So we don't actually have a tree yet, uh, but I got Jess and Warren out grabbing one of those for us. So let's go ahead and talk about the malt bill and get mashed in while they are doing that. Uh, overall, this malt bill is pretty simple. You can see it right here next to me. It is mostly two row with a little bit of acid malt for just pH adjustment in the mash. A little bit of chip malt just for a little bit of poofiness. It's the better way to do it. Better than uh, dextrin malt, um, like carapils. And uh, for some of our fermentability, we're actually gonna be using some uh, brown sugar. And I like brown sugar because it's super highly fermentable like all um, simple sugars are gonna be, but it's gonna carry a little bit of color and a little bit of residual flavor for it. Which I think, Makes it really, really good, specifically for uh, anything with a winter vibe. It doesn't add a ton of color, but you know that the color and the reason the color is there is there, if that makes sense. So, brown sugar is my sugar choice, this one. Uh, in terms of water profile, um, I'll go ahead and get my water cans mixed in as I'm getting all that mashed in. Uh, we got this water profile floating around me somewhere here. We are going hard on the water profile slightly today. Um, less chlorides, less um, sodiums, uh, more sulfates, more calciums, all that. Um, and of course, the sorbic acid. Um, so we're gonna add that in. And we want that to have the bite that you're gonna get from like a West Coast IPA. The reason being, we're not gonna add any hops to this, but we wanna give that bite like the pine tree is kind of playing the hop roll. So let's go ahead and finish getting mashed in, and then we'll uh, tell you what we do next. Thing turned on. I'll turn this up just a little bit. So we're filling our hot liquor tank up with a little bit more cold water. We're gonna heat that up so that we've got some sparge water ready to go for all this. Uh, Brewmaster actually just sent us that brew built. Uh, it's called the Boil Vigor. And what it does is since we've got 30 amp uh, 220 coming out of our cord, it gives us a way to kind of control how much power is actually going into our elements as we're heating up. So we don't run into any issues. We don't uh, you know, just run it at a full blast all the time and get things over boiling or anything like that. I am all mashed in right now, so I'm just gonna start sparging, get everything into the boil kettle, and uh, we're gonna bring this up to a quick boil, not too long, and after that's when we're gonna make all the tree magic happen. So let's go ahead and set up some pumps and make that all happen. All right, so we are going to infuse this Christmas tree into a beer that we were brewing two ways. One, we're gonna take all the needles off and infuse our hot wort into them, and we're also going to shoot hot wort into that needle container through a luge on the trunk. So let's do it. Good morning to the birds. Good morning, birds. I don't really see any birds. Oh, trust me, they're there. Good morning, birds. Where are the birds? <laughs> Silly idiot. They're outside. So all we've done so far is gone from the mash to the boil and we've done a semi-full boil, just enough to get to a hot break and get everything boiling. Uh, we've got our, as usual for our two barrel, our big 50 gallon kettle ripping over here and our side 18 gallon kettle just for all the extra stuff also boiling. Now let's show you what we've got going on for the tree infusion. You probably already saw the montage of of cutting and hacking and making Christmas into a, a gory spectacle. But we're going to be pumping from boil kettle into uh, what we've got, the Brazilla right here, full of all our pine needles. From the branches of the tree, which Jess so carefully picked out. 
and pruned to perfection. Uh, we're gonna be going into that kettle and doing an infusion in all the pine needles. And then from there, after the infusion, um, which is going right from the boil into there, so it's gonna be infusing hot and getting a lot of the sappy, uh, resiny goodness in there. We're gonna be going in this uh, luge, this tree luge. From there into, well, I'm gonna dub like a work grant. Um, Warren put a little uh, bag filter in there. We've also got our work chiller in there. And so after we have tree luge and probably lost a little bit of heat through conduction in the Brusilla with all the pine needles. And then again, just with the surface area on the luge, um, we're actually gonna be using that as a work grant uh, where the chiller will chill the wort adapter it is pine solid fused uh and then we're just gonna pump right from that into our fermenter now we are using quite geese we'll talk about that later uh but for now let's go ahead and get uh get all this stuff transfizzled i don't see no birds i don't see no birds look closer they're outside are you off your meds again no just a normal dose is that dose zero milligrams yeah, that's pretty close Okay, well there is no birds Then why do I hear them whisper? Last time I checked, birds Don't talk There's birds outside There's birds outside Okay, now I see the birds No you don't So I think we're all pretty well in awe about how Christmas tree-y uh, this thing smells It smells very much like a, like a Christmas tree Totally that's, uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> um, so we do have the work going down the uh, center of the Christmas tree luge. We've got all the pine needles in the uh, far infusion kettle over there. And uh, um, those are already starting to turn, which you can kind of tell they're being uh, properly infused or getting all the, the nice pine needle flavors off of that beer. And it's just kind of cool. If we had to do one more level of infusion on this, what we would do would be uh, if we could actually get uh, pine tree sap. Uh, that's one thing that you've seen us talk about with Thomas Crosskery, Emerus Fermentations Projects guy. He will actually collect sap and uh, he'll store it for until he's ready to use it and he'll use that at the end of the boil. So that'd be one level of Christmas tree higher than what we're doing. But there's still a fantastic Christmas tree smell just coming off of all the pine needles right there. And I would say maybe even more off of the, the luge through the center of the, of the Christmas tree. So, smelling really good so far. Uh, we'll check back with you when we gotta add some yeast, I guess. We're adding some extra pine needles to the, to the luge to make it extra infusion-y. Or just make it look really cool, one of the two. <laughs> So for this, we will be pitching a blend, our own house blend, of all the quiet yeasts that are about to expire. And this is two things for us. Number one, you're probably thinking, oh my God, all the great flavors that quiet yeast is going to make are gonna be perfect with the intense pine flavor from the tree. Um, but also, we wanna launch this beer in like 11 days. So quiet yeast is just gonna, it's gonna do its job really fast. Plus, even though they're expired, quiet yeast are super duper strong. So the small pitch, as long as we throw a butt ton of nutrients in the fermenter, are gonna do the job. So we're using like four expired quikings and then some hotheads and some SB and... Pop it off. Popping off the top of the zombie, I guess. for Christmas. Yeah, it's gonna be ready. But also then we can do the video on, you, you guys have seen this after Christmas. Happy Christmas, by Merry, the way. Yeah, happy yeah. holidays, merry everything. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, uh, I hope you got great presents. Do this with your trees. Um, let's, let's pitch some yeast. I'm not good at pitching tasks. What are you smelling? Uh, I get like lemony mintiness. But yeah, that's from the tree. It's like super fragrant. Wow. I'm pretty sure I've already said this somewhere else earlier in the video, but this smell that is just emanating across the entire brewery, not even just back here, but it's everywhere. We've had customers already comment on 
the smell is just nuts. It's like pine, but it's like pine with like, uh, one of our customers just said lemon, we've got mint, we've got all sorts of crazy, random, big, gigantic smells that are just permeating everywhere. This is going to be super tasty. Plus, we already took a gravity sample and tasted that. And the gravity started at 10... Uh, 1060. <laughs> the gravity started at 1060. I'm just using that as my guide. As my guide. Um, and we, we all tasted the gravity sample already too. And the, uh, the gravity sample tasted just like a, like a normal beer with a little extra sweetness, a little bit of interestingness from the brown sugar edition, but with just this crazy bright, minty, piney, I don't even know what to call it. Like whatever we're smelling is also in the taste and it's great and we're excited. And uh, I guess after this, we just got to clean up and we'll, we'll see you guys when the beer's ready and we'll taste that and see you then. All right, so beer's been done, transferred into the fermenter for a little bit, and uh, it's still kind of fresh uh, in two kegs, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a taste and let you guys know how we did on this beer. Before we go into that, this is our gin February uh, state beer for Alaska. This is gonna be our submission for a tree beer, so it'll be around for tasting for the end of that. Go ahead and try to make a tree beer or a juniper beer and then join our state beer challenge. Hashtag, it's pretty good. Overall, I'm like, tree comes through, you got some tree. Oh yeah, definitely taste the tree which was fun because, you know, we got to smell that when we were in the brew house, you know, making luges. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, it was pretty fun getting a big whiff of pine as we were running that beer through all the pine needles and everything like that. Uh, I don't know, what else do you taste about tr besides tree and regular beer? It has like a bit of a like sweetness to it almost. I'm guessing probably from just like all the sap. Maybe, yeah. I yeah got there's like a weird like sweetness or almost like, um, mintiness kind of i kind of got that too i think it's jumping from the needles it, yeah i think it comes through more as minty and horribly <laughs> to me <laughs> yeah and by weird you mean delicious <laughs> totally uh it, oh, no, yeah. it's, it is pretty good uh overall i think it's going to settle out a little bit in the kegs and hopefully brighten up some pine notes a little bit as it gets more carbonated how smashable is it and how much of it is it a long uh, if we had to smash it, I would say on a scale of one to 10, I'd smash. Absolutely. Totally smash. No passes. No. Um, and then if, on a, as a scale of a sipper, if you're really diving in, uh, I would totally smash also. So <laughs> now you may be asking, why are we smoking cigars on this side of the fence? Well, cause it's technically illegal for us to smoke them on that side of the fence. Gotta follow the laws. Um, join our shape your challenge. Like this video, make a tree beer and send it to us. Uh, send Christmas feet tree. pics to Peter. He's into that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I don't like the like the nasty feet. Like if you got like a crow's, you know, crow's feet or whatever the, the, the you get what I'm saying. Bunions. If you got bunions. The worse, the better. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> so, and my email, by the way, is jess.demchuck at <laughs> gmail and yahoo.com. So. That might actually be it, <laughs> <laughs> Close, but not quite. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, all right, anyways. So if your Christmas tree is still flopping around your house and you know, you're the kind of person who's probably going to keep it until February because <laughs> you don't know what to do with a tree that's in your house, maybe do this instead. All it takes is a little bit of ax sharpening skills and the incredible will to succeed. Yeah. No last minute life advice? Oh, life advice? I don't know. What, what, I don't know what people want. Don't eat the yellow snow. Whoops. Da, 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 da. So one thing that I wanted to add to the close out on this, because the beer has conditioned a little bit, it's brightened up a little bit and gotten carbonated since it's been on tap. And as it's done that, I've noticed that that mintiness, that almost herbally mintiness has kind of come across too much in that pseudo sweetness that Jess is talking about. It's a little bit overkill. Um, I think the pine needles are kind of the cause of that. And so if I had to do something different in this beer, I'd actually probably do less pine needles. And what I might do is I'd still keep the tree luge, but I might, instead of using a bunch of pine needles, only use a little bit of those, but also harvest that tree for sap and use some of that sap to get that extra pine kind of resiny note without it being too, I think that's where the herbally minty, almost pseudo sweetness is coming from. And I'm not, the more I drink it, the more I'm like, I don't really want a full pint of this because of the pine needles. Uh, join us for the State Beer Challenge when we see other people's uh, submissions for their Alaska beer at the end of February. And uh, I'll see you see, see then.